In this video, I will show you how to do linear regression with SAS. Before you watch it, please make sure that you have watched my other two videos called Linear Regression and Linear Regression Example. So let's go ahead and get started. I have opened up the SAS software and I have already opened my program and I have executed it and here are the results and I will go ahead and open up the data. You can go to my website and download the program and the data so you can follow along. So this is the data that we have for this example. It's 26 observations of cars. Miles per gallon MPG would be a dependent variable that we want to explain. Weight of the car is this and I generated a variable weight 1 which is this weight in thousand. Well, I divided this variable by a thousand so this is the weight of a car in thousand pounds so here's the price of the car in 1978 dollars here's where the car is foreign or not so these are the variables that we will use as independent variables in 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 our analysis so the first thing to do is read in the data and the, the data set is called regression underscore auto dot csv and this is where I have stored it so you need to change these uh, when you execute the program and the first thing to do is look at some descriptive statistics using proc means reading in the data and for variables I have mpg our dependent variable weight one price and foreign as independent variables we have 26 observations, the mean is uh, 20.92 for the miles per gallon, uh, weight is um, about 3,000 pounds, price is about $6.6 thousand .6 dollars, and foreign 26% of the cars are foreign. We can also look at more detailed descriptive statistics if we use PROC univariate and variable MPG and here you can also see uh, this variable including what the median is, different percentiles, lowest and highest observations and so on. Next thing to do is we can calculate correlations with PROC core uh, and variables put, put in all the variables that we have and these are the correlations that we have the highest correlation that we see is between weight and mass per gallon which is the independent and dependent variable of minus 0.8 and we see that the rest of the correlations are uh, relatively high um, of the independent variables except for, for this one we can also plot the data using proc gplot and we're plotting mpg times weight 1. So this is how it looks, uh, the scatter plot looks like. Uh, here we have the independent variable weight 1 and here we have the dependent variable. Notice, and these are the, the observations that we have. Notice even just observing this data, it looks like we have a negative relationship. So when we are fitting a regression line, we would want to um, generate a line that's as close to all the the points as possible um, and that's what we will do next we will run a simple linear regression by using proc reg data equals data and model mpg equals weight one so in the simple linear regression we only have one independent variable but typically that's not the case but we're going to start here because it's very easy case and we can also look at uh, some nice graphs. These are the results for the regression. And these are the parameter estimates on which we are going to concentrate. Notice that we have intercept and we have our independent variable weight 1 here. And these are the coefficients. So this is the intercept and this is the coefficient. The way to interpret this coefficient is that if weight increases by one unit, which in our case is 1,000 pounds, 
then we will have a reduction, I'm saying reduction because we have a negative sign, a reduction of 5.53 miles per gallon, which is our dependent variable. Now we want to know if this coefficient is significantly different from zero. And to do that, we will look at the standard error here, and the t value is the parameter divided by the standard error. And we will have the p value of less than 0.05, which means we have a significant result, uh, which means we have significantly negative relationship in this case. We can also look at the ANOVA table here. For the model error and total variation, we have these are the sum of squares. And the mean square is calculated as the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. Notice that we have one independent variable, so one degree of freedom, and we have 26 observations, minus one is how we got this 25. So the F value here is the mean square due to model divided by mean square error, and that's the te te test statistic of 45. If you compare this to the critical value, the uh, to the F critical value, we have a piece that value that is less than 0.05 which means that we have joint significance of coefficients uh, and they're significantly different than zero and that's the case because we only have one coefficient here on one variable so we would have a correspondence between these results now notice some of the some interesting uh, graphs here and I'm going to start with this graph first which is this is the graph that we had of the scatter plot before. Here we have the x, the independent variable, and here we have y, the dependent variable. And these circles, these are the actual values. Okay? And the regression line is this line. This is the line that minimizes the sum of squared errors. It's the difference between this point and the regression line. So these are the errors that we have here from here here and we have a negative error here. Uh, we have the confidence limits here, the 95% confidence limits also plotted um, in here. And so we have a negative relationship here. And again, these are the actual values for y for the dependent variable and the predicted value would be right here. So the actual minus the predicted value would be the error and if you notice this, these are the residuals or the errors plotted against zero. So we're getting this line here and we're kind of flattening it out. So notice that, for example, this actual value is very high from its predicted values. And that's the residual, uh, which is about, let's see, that's a value of 7 approximately that we have there. So this is the nice thing about uh, simple linear regression is because you can plot things because we only have one independent and one dependent variable. The one thing to uh, do right now is estimate a multiple linear regression model. And you, as you can see, everything else, everything is similar to what we had before, except instead of having one independent variable, we have in this case, 3. And once we estimate this model, these are the results that we have. Notice in the parameter estimates, now we have more lines. Uh, and these lines are for weight 1, price, and 4. And these are our independent variables. And we have new set of coefficients now. Notice that this number, which was minus 5.53, now is a little different. It's minus 7.12, and that's normal when you include more variables to have a different result. So the way to interpret this coefficient is the same. For each additional unit increase in x, which is weight, so for each additional 1,000 pounds in x, because that's how my uh, variable is measured, we have a 7.12 units reduction of miles per gallon for the dependent variable. And we have to say here that we're also holding everything else constant, so we're not changing that. 
if we look at the significance, individual significance of that coefficient, we have to divide, divide the parameter estimate by the standard error. That's how we get this t value. And compare that to the critical value, critical t value. And we get a p value of less than 0.05. Therefore, we have significance, which means this coefficient is statistically significant from, from significantly different from zero. Okay, so that's a good thing. And if you look at these p values here, we have they're not significantly different from zero, and therefore I will not interpret those coefficients because they're not really different from zero even though you know they are the numbers are not exactly zero they're not significantly different from zero and that's all you need to say about them next we can also interpret here the ANOVA table and now notice that we have three independent variables so that's the degrees of freedom here total degrees of freedom is number of observations minus one and again, um, this mean squares is the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom, and the F statistic is this divided by that, and the p-value for that is less than 0.01, which means, again, um, it's less than 0.05, which means we have significant results. This means that all the coefficients are jointly significantly different from zero. And again, that's a good thing and we want significant results in a regression. Another thing to look at is the R square. R square is equal to the model sum of squares divided by the total sum of squares, these two numbers. And the way to interpret that is that uh, we can explain 67% of the variation in the data using the regression and the rest is due to error. That's a very high R-square and that's a very good fit, which means that all the points are very close to the regression line. If they're all over the place, then the R-square would be going down to zero. The adjusted R-square uses the formula that I talked about in the other video and corrects for the number of independent variables so it's a bit lower than the r square which is always the case and again there are several graphs but we no longer have the nice graph that we had before because we have more than one independent variable so now it's a little bit harder uh, to graph things in two-dimensional space when we have more than uh, one independent variables so this is all I had for how to do linear regressions in SAS. Thank you for watching and come back and watch more videos.